Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel, Dylan here. Well, today we are exposing the truth about Kamala Harris and you will not believe what just took place. Donald Trump and his team and J.D. Vance just came out hard and exposed the truth about Kamala Harris and just the horrible, horrible things about her. And this is actually shocking the world, making waves on the internet. And let's just say things are not looking good for Kamala Harris. If you're liberal and you like Kamala Harris, you're probably not gonna like this video. But you should watch it because this will reveal the truth about Kamala Harris. So I challenge you, if you clicked on this video and you like Kamala Harris, watch this video because you might not be aware of such things because the mainstream media paints this narrative. I mean, I was just watching CNN earlier today and they were the way they were talking about Donald Trump. I mean, they were uh, you know, comparing him to Hitler and saying this and that and talking about how he's gonna be a dictator and this and that. I was like, oh my, I honestly feel bad for liberals who tune in to those shows because it's like, they're, they're shoving down this narrative to, down pe to people's brains, telling them, you know, these things about Trump, which like, if you just listen to Trump, he's a positive, God-loving Christian man. I, I just, I don't know, maybe it's because he does, you know, worship the Lord, talk about Jesus quite a bit. We know Melania also talks about, you know, she leads prayer, she leads worship when she, you know, goes to her speeches and stuff, so... I don't know, but we're gonna reveal the truth about Kamala Harris today, but before we do, we're gonna read the Bible and we're gonna pray because God comes first, amen? Comment amen down below if you believe God comes first. And there is now a second hurricane, I believe it's uh, Hurricane Milton, uh, going towards Florida right now, so I wanted to just say a special prayer um, and I invite you all to pray with me for those and anybody watching this show right now in Florida. I wish you the, I, I pray for you and I pray that God protects you. So today we are going to do a prayer of protection for all those affected by the first hurricane and this hurricane that's coming because we know that, you know, people are struggling. Um, people are having to spend hundreds of dollars per night and on uh, hotels and a lot of people have died and Kamala Harris, uh, they, you know, they gave out a $750 um, payment to those people, um, but a lot of those people, at least I've seen, are getting denied. They're, they're applying and they're, they're not even getting that money from FEMA. They're getting literally denied that 750 bucks, which wouldn't even cover two hotel night stays. So I really feel bad for those people because it's like Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, like what, why is, what's Kamala Harris doing? She's going on some podcast called call her daddy where she's talking about that show that talks about um you know having sex with dudes and hooking up and all it's this very liberal progressive show it's and that's where kamala harris is spending her time at this time when you know people are dying or our own country and you're donating donate sending our own taxpayer dollars to ukraine and overseas it's like anyways i feel bad for those people affected right now i really really do Hopefully people are waking up and seeing what's actually going on and seeing that Trump, you know, would not, you know, he actually went down there. He's actually, he would have helped way more and he would have used executive authority. Okay, let's read Psalm 91 and then jump in. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him, because he knows my name. 
When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Comment amen down below, my friends. Let us all turn to the Lord right now for protection. Amen. Now, Kamala Harris went on the uh, Late Show with Stephen Colbert and, you know, basically got absolutely obliterated. Watch this. What is it that is, to coin a phrase, great about America and that kindles your love for it? There's so much. There's so, there's so much. Does she even, know, I mean, she's running for president. Does she even like America? I mean, it's, I'm literally questioning that. And you're right. And I have the blessing and privilege of traveling all over our country. And in particular... But she's never been to Europe, right? <laughs> in these years where we have witnessed so-called leaders attempting to create division between us. I meet... Like yourself? People who are just... The, the people who, who are the ones who are the most optimistic about what is possible. Who believe in each other. who Like Donald Trump and MAGA? <laughs> Who are you describing here? I understand that we all have so much more in common than what separates us. People who, you know, when people are out there protesting, you know what, God love them because we have a nation that says that we will allow freedom of speech, freedom of association. And for the most part, we all stand for that even if we agree to disagree. I look at who we are, we believe in freedom and liberty as Americans. And we fight for it. Now, there will be those at the extremes, but the vast majority of us, I think, great pride in understanding that our democracy will only be as strong as our willingness, each one of us, to fight for it. And when I travel our country, that's what I see. It kind of sounds like she's describing MAGA there a little bit. I mean, that's really quite strange. Now we have J.D. Vance exposing the truth about Kamala Harris, let's tune in, guys. There are a lot of, there's a lot of debate and a lot of conflicting reports about whether or not money is coming from FEMA money spent on illegal immigrants or the resettling of migrants, and could that have gone to the American people in need in North Carolina? There's conflicting reports and there's debate about the responsiveness as well of FEMA. You've done a good job of separating and talking about the priorities, I think, of the American government. My question for you is, how would you and Donald Trump, in a situation like this, ensure that you live up to what you have talked about, that we place Americans first? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, you have to separate what people are saying. They'll say, well, there's a bucket of money in FEMA that's gone to illegal aliens, and that's somehow separate than the bucket of money that should, by right, go to American citizens. I think that misses the fundamental point that the Biden-Harris administration has turned FEMA effectively into an agency that helps to resettle and helps to deal with illegal immigration. That is just fundamentally going to distract focus from their core job of helping American citizens in their time of need. 100% preach, J.D. Vance, preach. God, I love J.D. Vance. He's a powerhouse. I think the fundamental mistake that Kamala Harris's administration has made here, Will, is that from the get-go, you should have imposed military-style command and control. Yeah. You've got eight different bureaucratic organizations. You've got a lot of different bureaucratic fiefdoms that sometimes delay the provision of necessary resources. You need to empower a military commander on the ground to get helicopters to where they need to go, to get supplies to where they need to go, to cut through some of the FAA bureaucracy when it comes to you know planes and helicopters landing in the right place the problem here i really believe is just it's like the dmv at industrial scale and yes. because of it a lot of folks in north carolina are suffering unnecessarily i hope to god you don't have unnecessary loss of life but i fear that we do and it all goes back to why do we have a president and a vice president one of whom is on the beach one the other of whom is participating in fundraisers rather than doing their job it is incompetence of the highest order. What Donald Trump would do if he was president is impose real leadership, force the bureaucracy to be responsive, 
not at a bureaucratic pace, but at a business pace to the needs of American citizens. That's how you save lives and limit needless suffering. Well, I can tell you, I know, I guess they have to go back to the Senate if they want to change buckets of where the money's going to go. But if you look at FEMA spending, they put $1.4 billion on migrants. Shelter service, $640 million. Emergency food services, $780 million. I think that that is uh, obscene. I think that that's got to stop, and I imagine you guys are going to attack that right away. Uh, I've never before. The other 230 people dead from this. I mean, what an absolute joke. What an absolute joke. Look at this. This is Donald Trump exposing the truth about this. Let's tune in, guys. So we're into almost $300 billion for Ukraine, and yet they're offering people $750. For immediate needs. For the worst, yeah. yeah, but for the worst hurricane that anybody's seen. But more importantly than that is they don't have the people. They're not doing it. It's a bad, it's a very bad thing. This How would you Katrina. do it differently? I'd have a tremendous team of people here. They don't have any people here. The people are all, I was in North Carolina yesterday. I was in Georgia. And Georgia's different. You have a good governor. He's doing a very good job. But North Carolina is a disaster. And it was also hit very hard. Mm. But they don't have the people. And they're complaining there's no people around to help. How embarrassing. How horrible. This is Trump offering a note of prayer for the hostages. This is a man who actually cares. This is a leader. This is a true leader. Kamala Harris wouldn't do this because, oh, she wouldn't want to offend the other side. It's like Trump actually cares. He actually cares, and that's why we like him. Let's tune in. Do you want to do Caller Daddy today? Well, I think you and your listeners have really got this. You shouldn't have been there. None of us should have been there. The people is to be real. You know, and to talk about the things that people really care about. I mean, People are dying, and Kamala Harris is on this Call Her Daddy podcast show where this, uh, you know, forgive me, forgive my language, but the Call Her Daddy show, they talk about touching dudes' buttholes and having sex with this and that and hooking up and this and that, and they bring on adult film stars, and it, it, it's a nasty, disgusting show that... It, you know, they, it's it's a lot about sex and this and, you know, sex culture and hooking up and this and this liberal feministic ideologies. And then, you know, people are dying. People are dying. People are dying. And that's where Kamala Harris is. It's nasty. It's disgusting. And it's honestly just disrespectful to the American people. And I hope people are watching this. People is to be real. You know, and to talk about the things that people really care about. I mean, show is really about your listeners and I think especially now this is a moment in the country and in life where people really want to know they're seen and heard and, and that they're part of a community uh, everything's gone it's everything's gone and, um, and so I'm really glad to be with you she doesn't care that uh, team Trump uh, or the MAGA page on Twitter or uh, on TikTok posted on this, the call on this they have a few um they have a few uh, uh, TikTok pages, and these videos, you know, they get millions and millions of views. Highly recommend if you guys do use TikTok to check that out. And I wanted to play this moment from the debate. I'm sure you guys have seen this, but Donald Trump really, really paints a good picture about, about Kamala Harris and about why hasn't she done it? Why hasn't she done what, you know, she's, wait, she's been in office for three and a half years. Why are you going to promote someone? who's doing a crappy job. Usually they would fire them. Watch this, guys. So she just started by saying she's going to do this, she's going to do that, she's going to do all these wonderful things. Why hasn't she done it? She's been there for three and a half years. They've had three and a half years to fix the border. They've had three and a half years to create jobs and all the things we talked about. Why hasn't she done it? She should leave right now, go down to that beautiful White House, go to the Capitol, get everyone together and do the things you want to do, but you haven't done it and you won't do it because you believe in things that the American people don't believe in. You believe in things like, we're not gonna frack, we're not gonna take fossil fuel, we're not gonna do things that are going to make this country strong, whether you like it or not. Germany tried that and within one year they were back to building normal 
energy plants. We're not ready for it. We can't sacrifice our country for the sake of bad vision. But I just ask one simple question. Why didn't she do it? We're a failing nation. We're a nation that's in serious decline. We're being laughed at all over the world. All over the world, they laugh. I know the leaders very well. They're coming to see me. They call me. We're laughed at all over the world. They don't understand what happened to us as a nation. We're not a leader. We don't have any idea what's going on. We have wars going on in the Middle East. We have wars going on with Russia and Ukraine. We're going to end up in a third world war, and it'll be a war like no other because of nuclear weapons, the power of weaponry. I rebuilt our entire military. She gave a lot of it away to the Taliban. She gave it to Afghanistan. What these people have done to our country, and maybe toughest of all, is allowing millions of people to come into our country. Many of them are criminals, and they're destroying our country. The worst president, the worst vice president in the history of our country. Wow, that was very well said. Very, very well sped, said. Now, so Kamala Harris just basically got exposed on 60 Minutes talking about illegal immigration. Uh, Kamala Harris was confronted on if allowing illegal immigration to quadruple on her watch was a mistake. She got asked three times, response with absolute nonsense. This guy on Twitter is basically saying this interview is ending her campaign. This is a really bad look for Kamala. What an absolute idiot absolute idiot uh we do have breaking news donald trump is now leading with 51 percent on poly market this is like a betting app basically people actually bet money on who's gonna win and apparently it's 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 been quite accurate it's actually trending right now but yeah donald trump three percent lead over uh kamala harris pretty interesting this is donald trump he uh talked about kamala harris he said i'm running against a low iq individual this is Trump slamming Kamala Harris. Let's watch this, guys. The people in this room, high IQ individuals. I'm running against a low IQ individual, her. I'm not even talking about him, her. I got a low IQ individual. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Now, here's Donald J. Trump slamming Kamala Harris in North Carolina. Let's tune in, guys. And she got lucky with this. She was the first one out. She was 22 people, I guess, I hear. I just asked, I said, that many? A lot of people. She never made it to Iowa, the great state of Iowa. She's, he's talking about the last time she ran for president. Uh, I, I believe when, she, I think when she was running against Joe Biden, she was like last. She was the first one out. She had a lack of skill and people didn't like her and now she's running for president and she never got one vote. Think about that. When Kamala lays out her fake economic plan this week, probably will be a copy of my plan because of basically that's what she does. Just remember, she goes to work every morning in the West Wing. Her desk is 10 steps from the Oval Office. She cast the tie-breaking votes that gave us record inflation. And for nearly four years, Kamala has crackled as the American economy has burned. What happened to her laugh? I haven't heard that laugh in about a week. That's why they keep her off the stage. That's why she's disappeared. That's the laugh of a crazy person, I will tell you, if you haven't known it. It's a crazy, she's crazy. They told her, don't laugh, don't laugh. <laughs> every time Kamala Harris laughs. If I had a, if I got a nickel for every time Kamala Harris did a cringy hyena laugh, I would be a, I would be very wealthy. I could retire. No, her laugh is career threatening. They said don't laugh. She hasn't laughed. She doesn't laugh anymore. It's smart, but someday it's going to come out. That's the laugh of a person with some big problems. She says her plan is going to be and bring down prices. She thinks she's going to bring down prices. And why? Here's a simple little few words. Why didn't you do it, Kamala? Why didn't you do it? You've been there three and a half years. Why aren't you doing it now? You can do it right now. That's what we're all asking. Kamala Harris, why haven't you done it now? I can say that with everything. Why hasn't she secured the border? 
You know, she was the border czar, right? She was the border czar. It was a big deal. She says now she wasn't the border czar. That's okay. She was in charge of the border. Call her whatever you want. But she was in charge, and it it was uh, the worst. This was the worst border in history. There's never been a border in the world like this. Why hasn't she brought back the jobs? Why? She talks about jobs. We're going to come up with a new plan. She's been there for three and a half years with a man who, frankly, she defrauded the public because she didn't tell you about that man. I exposed him during the debate. Thank you very much. He did. Trump did. And now here's J.D. Vance absolutely letting loose on Kamala Harris during his speech in Butler, Pennsylvania, where Trump recently got shot, yet he returned with Elon Musk and J.D. Vance. Let's tune in, guys. My friends, I, I know you'll join me in saying we're going to remember July 13th, 2024, forever. Many of you were here, and it is a testament to your courage and your patriotism that you're here again today. Look at that epic patriot in the back with the fight, fight, fight symbol <laughs> so epic with the maga hat on i mean some of these patriots are just i mean they are just so far mag like so pro trump it's it's pretty incredible to see these people just fearlessly supporting trump now you heard the shots you saw the blood we all feared the worst but you knew everything would be okay when President Trump raised his fist high in the air and shouted, Fight! 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 Fight. <laughs> this dude, like, you, you must have chill. Like, everybody there has got to have chills. So cool. Now, I believe, as sure as I'm standing here today, that what happened was a true miracle. And on that day, America felt the truth of Scripture. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Wow, J.D. Vance quoting Scripture. That's incredible. I truly believe that God saved President Trump's life that day. Wow. And I believe that God is with us right now and watches over this incredible nation every single day. Now, there, there are so many people here, so many people we're honored to have. It would be impossible to name all of them. I see the great Sean Parnell over here. Sean, you're a hero, man. You were here on that day. We're joined by many first responders elected officials and other distinguished guests and as we gather on these grounds once again my friends we especially thank god for the two great americans who were wounded and survived in july that's david dutch and james copenhaver god bless you guys amen amen now we pray for their full and complete recoveries and we're honored that David and his family were able to join us today. Let's give a round of applause to David. God bless you and God bless your family. Amen. But our hearts are heavy with sadness, knowing that there's one hero who's not here with us today. And that's, of course, the great Corey Coppertori. Corey. Rest in peace, rest in peace. Corey, Corey, Corey. He jumped on his daughters and wife to protect them. He saved their lives. We're never gonna Which I believe makes you an instant martyr, instant saint, straight shot to heaven for saving someone's life like that. Forget Corey. We're never gonna forget his heroism that day. And I want everyone to join me right now in sending our support, our respect, our love to the Compertory family here with us today. We love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for loving this country and thank you for not giving up on it.
Now, after the heartache of that day, our nation hoped to turn a page. We hoped that our opponents would remember that before we are Democrats or before we are Republicans, we are Americans. Yep. Amen. But sadly, our opponents have not heeded Abraham Lincoln's words and listened to the better angels of our nature. Even after that terrible assassination attempt that took one man's life and nearly took many others, they continue to use dangerous, inflammatory rhetoric. The media has continued to call Donald Trump the guy who actually won his primary, a threat to democracy. <laughs> yeah. Wow, what a dig to Kamala Harris there. Hacking, quote, the foundations of our democracy. Kamala Harris said that he was attacking, quote, the foundations of our democracy. Wow. And I think I, you all will join me in saying to Kamala Harris, how dare you talk about threats to democracy? Donald Trump took a bullet for democracy. What the hell have you done? Whoa. Whoa. I love J.D. Vance, guys. USA, USA. The truth is that Kamala Harris and her allies, they attack Donald Trump in order to silence us, we the people. They have declared war explicitly on the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. Kamala Harris proudly says she wants to censor the Internet. And Tim Wall said there is no guarantee to free speech. What do we think about that? I heard that. I heard that. I, I hate Tim Waltz. But we all know, my friends, we all know that censorship is only the first step. Just look at everything they've done to President Trump. First, they tried to silence him. When that didn't work, they tried to bankrupt him. When that didn't work, they tried to jail him. And with all the hatred they have spewed at President Trump, it was only a matter of time before somebody tried to kill him. And that's exactly what happened, not just here in Butler, Pennsylvania, but just a few weeks later in Florida. Three weeks ago, while these guys still go out there and attacking him as a threat to democracy, another gunman armed with an AK-47 style rifle tried to finish the job. Someone who is afraid of interviews with the friendly American media or someone who faces down two assassins and returns triumphantly to the very place that he got shot. Donald Trump returning to Butler, Pennsylvania was absolutely epic. Now here's Peter Ducey exposing uh, the truth about Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Uh, $157 million just got sent to Lebanon, but the White House is demanding Congress come back and provide more money for uh, North Carolina. She accused him of misinfo. His questions forced to her to admit the two hundred million dollars for N for uh, North Carolina is SBA loans. Is it actually loans? No way. That seven hundred fifty bucks to the hurricane victims. They have to pay that money back? Is that a joke? ...to the impacted areas, and but instead, people want to do disinformation, misinformation, which is dangerous, which is dangerous, because then it, what that, when, when folks on the ground hear that, they may not want to ask for the help that they need. That is there for them. That is there for them. That's our focus here. But President Biden is fond of saying, show me your budget and I will tell you what you value. If he's got money for people in Lebanon right now without Congress having to come back, what does it say about his values? There's not enough money right now for his people values, in North Carolina to need it. 
That's not misinformation. Wait, no, that is wait, your whole your whole premise of the question is misinformation, sir. Hey, what you do? Wait, yes, yes, it's misinformation. I just I just mentioned right I just mentioned I just mentioned to you that we provided more than two hundred million dollars to folks who are impacted in the area, and I just shared with you that people are deciding not to. Not, uh, people are deciding not to. President, not to wait. Congress, that there's not enough money to help people. We're North talking Carolina about the SBA by, disaster loan. That's yes. money for people in North and, Carolina. And that's important. SBA disaster loan? They have to give that money back? Kamala Harris shared this. She said, "Take a took a moment with Alexander Cooper to see if we could think about think of any law that gives the government the power to make a decision about a man's body." The answer, no. Well, what about um, the draft? Can you think of any laws that give government the power to make decisions about uh, the male body? She is such an idiot. She is just such an idiot. It's so weird to me. Among independents, Kamala Harris has a 16-point lead. Am I losing faith in Americans right now? How does Kamala Harris have a 16 point lead over Trump among independents? <clears throat> TIPP Insights for Issue and Insights just did a poll this week. 997 voters, pretty small sample size, but still. 49% uh, said they would vote for Harris, 46 said they would vote for Trump, but among independents, Democratic presidential candidate Harris received 52%. Uh, Republican candidate Trump received 36, 10% not sure. So Kamala Harris is leading drastically from in, over independence. It's surprising because after RK Jr., I thought he would pull more people towards Trump. And it's and how how <laughs> Kamala Harris is leading 49% to 46% on Trump. Crazy. And I'm only asking you to do one thing. We don't even need your money. Keep your money. Just go out and vote. Get everybody a vote. Go and get them and vote. This is Trump at a swing state. He just says, get out and vote. That's in Wisconsin. We don't even, he just like, I'm done, camp. I'm done, like, fundraising. I just, he's like, I don't even need, look at this. $1.5 billion more money to Ukraine. They just they just gave another 1.5 billion dollars more to Ukraine, but the new new North Carolina hurricane victim 750 dollar loans. So if you don't like Kamala Harris, comment down below and thumbs up the video. And also, I challenge you, if you're brave enough, share this video on your social media page, whether you use Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. I don't know. I don't care. Blast this to your email friends. We need to get the truth out there. People deserve to know this stuff, all right? People deserve to think this way and hear Trump talking about this and getting the truth out there. So let me know your thoughts on this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. God bless.